Hello and welcome to Below the Title, I'm Robert. And I'm Taylor, and today we're talking Hard Target. So Hard Target, it's a 1993 action film directed by John Woo. It's his first American film and apparently the first Hollywood action film directed by, or is it an action film or just first Hollywood, Hollywood film, film directed by, directed a, Chinese by director. a Chinese director? This is one of my faves when it comes to Mr. Wu. It's an enjoyable piece of action cinema. Because this is the movie that has Jean-Claude winking at a pigeon, punching a rattlesnake, and Wilford Brimley riding away from an exploding house on a horse in slow motion. I couldn't ask for much more. Oh, I, how about Ted Raimi? Ted Raimi, who doesn't have any change. Ain't got no change, man. <laughs> and the best eyebrow raise committed to film. It has it all. This has some of the best haircuts in it. There's a shot early on in the restaurant from behind him where he's got the long, greasy mullet. It, it's an epic mullet. And then there's a waitress in the diner who's got this sort of Grace Jones kind of... It's, it's such a haircut of its time, possibly even five or six years earlier than its time. <laughs> It's about a group of people who've set up a business, they travel the world, they offer clients who have lots of money the ability to hunt humans. It's like a drug, isn't it? To bring a man down. So they choose homeless people who are also war veterans. You know, war veterans. They're supposed to choose people who don't have any family or anyone to miss them. But the shonky guy that they have to choose the people makes a mistake. And they do choose someone who has a daughter who just hasn't seen her father for like 20 years. It just happens to turn up just okay. after he gets killed. Yeah, like days. <laughs> and if that. is looking for her father. And so we have Jean-Claude Van Damme who, who saves her from, from some thugs early well, on. Well, she's not streetwise. No. Not only is she, is she a poor excuse for her daughter, she's got loads of cash. She's just showing and cash around. And ends up almost getting mugged. Yeah. And Jean-Claude who saves the day. And she ends up hiring him. Well, she wants to hire him to show her around to to look for it. My father. But he's trying to get a job, which is on a, on a ship. But he doesn't have the money, so he needs a job. Which is convenient, because she's there, and she can pay him a couple hundred bucks that he needs. $217. This movie is eminently quotable. Not quite commando level. No, it's there. still of that, coming out of that era. I mean, 80s films are, have got all the, the great quotes, the Arnold films, but this is one of those very quotable films. Mm -hmm. Randall, Randall, Randall. Don't worry about Randall. <laughs> He's all ears. Now take your big stick and your boyfriend and find a bus to catch. Looks like I'm going to be out of time. Take him in, man. Way out of time. To... I know you didn't mean to hurt my feelings. Randall, I come back here. I cut me a steak. It's a pre-mummy Arnold Vosloo as the main henchman. Lance is the boss. Yeah, Lance Henriksen, who is just over the top in this, in a oh, good yeah. way. He's fantastic. I don't know what he's doing half the time. It's just, but it's enjoyable. Careless is what you are, Rim. Careless and stupid, and now you're sorry too. Hold it! Hey. Move! Will you move? Move! Make sure he gets there, Pick. The film originally was more about him. Well, there's been so many cuts. This thing got knocked back so many times. Like, at one point, it went for another half an hour longer, and it was more apparently focused on Lance's character. Yeah. And then Jean Claude turned around and went, "No, no, it is about me," and re-edited it to be more about him because no one trusted John to be able to deliver a film so much that they even put Sam Raimi as the executive producer to oversee it and to overtake it. Yeah, if if Wu if failed, if Wu couldn't pull it off, <laughs> Sam Raimi was gonna um, step in. And, and might I say, John Wu was in his mid forties at this point. Yeah. I, like, it's not like done, it's some dumb 20-year-old. Well, this is the thing that got me school. because Universal was a bit nervous about hiring Wu, but he was incredibly experienced mm. at doing action films. Maybe it's all in hindsight now, but you go back and look at his action films in Hong Kong and they are far superior than anything Hollywood was really doing. And, and even I'd say a lot of Hollywood action films now are influenced by mm. John Wu. It's weird that they were, it's, yeah, it's like it was some kid, uh, it's his first film, mm. and they were worried about it. It's like, it's John Woo. It's John Woo. <laughs> and it's filled with these trademarks. It's got, you know, doves. 
doves. Oh, it's got doves. Hey, pigeon. It's got two motorbikes. guns. It's got motorbikes. It's got a camera that never sits still. Yeah, and it's also got double action. Mm. Where something will explode in slow mo, and then it cuts to the repeated shot, but yeah. in fast motion. The scene with the wall in the middle of it. Mm. Yeah, the face off the thing. Fa you know, that's all in there. There's a Levi's ad at one point. She's sitting there in the car going, what the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> and there's like a <laughs> bow, 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 bow. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. And it reveals him. And all it needs is Levi. It wasn't really received. No, it was a flop at the time. Shut the fuck up. Because it wasn't really received that well at the time. He do not agree either. And Wu... <laughs> and Wu said that in hindsight, he, f he was trying to do too much. And coming mm -hmm. to it from Hong Kong, he was trying to do a Hong Kong film, which was actually a very different style to American films. Well, I'm surprised that people didn't take to it because I would have thought a lot of people would go, this is awesome. Yeah. But uh, it, was, it is a different style than people would have been used to. And he was trying to do too much and it was... But in the end, and in hindsight, yeah, it's it's a classic film, classic action film, a cult favourite action film. It's grown over the uh, years. Yeah. I remember my cousin saw yeah. it before me and he was like, you have to see this film, you know, and then I said that to other people. So yeah. no doubt once it hit video, it, it just snowballed into what it is today. Yeah. And it has... Oh, what the fuck is going on today? My hands on order. This is what gives me the chance to do the... We didn't say how Jean Claude normally walks around like that. Oh, these big ass. I really need to take a shit. <laughs> so, yes. Um, it, where were we? I'm still surprised that it wasn't accepted a bit more back then. With the amount of support he had from Universal at the beginning. What do you know? They probably didn't have a huge push. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably one of those films that they didn't think much of. Well, it's just... uni it was Universal in the summer of 93. They had a little movie called Jurassic Park. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they probably weren't really worrying about anything else. Fuck it. We, we, With their cigars, counting the money. Ivory back <laughs> scratches going. <laughs> oh my God, we've made so much money. The father of Yancey Butler's character. Natasha. Played by the film's writer. He was the writer. He's killed in the opening scene. They burn his body in a, in a fire. Mm. But Van Damme gets a bit suspicious. Because Chance. They, his name's Chance, by the way. Yes. Because my mum took one. He's suspicious. So he goes and looks at the fire and finds one of the dog tags. But that's after a dove gives him the hint to do it. And then the dove lands on his dog tags because he's, <laughs> let's, you know, he's an ex, whatever. And he looks over and goes, eh. And then he goes looking for the other one. And then he gets jumped but, by two guys, which leads to the line. Tell that bitch girlfriend here's the point of Teddy's north. It's step on the gas. He's arrested. But then he convinces the cop, who was pretty dismissive initially. Yeah, earlier on, she's like, what else? Um, that it was actually a murder. Your daddy didn't die in the fire. He was murdered. They have another hunt, but it's a person we've already met, one of the other homeless guys. He gets shot in the middle of a street. Yeah, well, they've been really stealthy about what they're doing is they hunt people through the docklands with dirt bikes. Yeah. And then they, because he start this guy makes the upper hand and starts off and mm. the hunters. And so they really stealthily shoot him in the middle of a very crowded street. Well, it kicks off the last, yeah. or the second half of the film. Because the thing is, once you reach this point, it doesn't stop. They go to talk to the fat guy who was abused mercilessly in this movie by everybody. Yeah! <laughs> Miss me. Oh, Christ, not again. He has an incredibly shit car. I remember watching this car. It's a comically shit he, car. He's, he's just got an incredible car. I just remember, what, you know, I would have been 17, 18 when this came out. Yeah. And I remember just thinking, I don't ever want to end up like that. And then he gets, well, he, he gets her, his head blown off with a shotgun. But it does lead to, ooh. <laughs> Picks a great henchman. I'm a professional. You wouldn't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to hurt his feelings. And then there's this action sequence with a motorcycle chase. This has him standing up on the dirt bike. Colliding with the car. Rolling over the top of it. Doing a flip over the car. Firing at the car, which in explodes. movie style explodes. And then. It's a little celebration. Wouldn't have it any other way.
They gather together past clients to actually hunt them down. Mm. Chance Boudreau. It seems odd when the police are on your tail now know that this is going on, that you would then get all these people together in a big hunt. <laughs> it's just like, fuck it. Let, let's have an all out action piece for the end of it as we hunting through the bayou. And into a uh, Mardi Gras warehouse. Yep. But first stopping at Uncle DeVay's house. Play by what? Whoa. <laughs> Shots. Uncle DeVay is Wilford Brimley. He, <laughs> raises, he had raised Jean-Claude's character. Chance Boudreau. And makes one hell of a moonshine. <laughs> Mac Jack Rabbit slapped a bear. That yeah. scene also has the one love scene in the film. Because yes. originally there was a bit more of a supposedly romance and there was apparently a scene that was cut yeah. out between yeah, although Chance no, and Yancey Butler. No. Natasha. But there is still a love scene in it. And it's the reunion between Chance and his shotgun. There's a man being reunited with his love right there. As epic as everything is, nothing is as epic as the fact that Duvet is wearing little white gumboots. The main bad guy. Lance is in a league of his own in this one. He is doing some wacky stuff. They He's set really him on fire. They miss him in the head with like an <laughs> arrow. Tifu putain! I don't think he's acting when he spins because <laughs> they, it's just like, hey, watch this. Fuck. <laughs> and he, it's, yeah. And, and, and in regards to Lance, oh, spoiler, he, John claude kills everybody. And Lance's demise in this movie has, it's, it's barely been topped. It doesn't make much sense. It doesn't. But by God, is it funny. But he's got Yancey Butler Natasha. by the hair. And he gets her to load his gun. Load me. That only has one bullet. No, at yeah, the time. it's the thump. And then his demise is via grenade. But he seems to take a long time unscrewing the grenade to take it all apart. So he could have pulled it out of his pants and thrown it at John Claude. Chance Boudreau. Yeah. <laughs> Whoop. This is the movie that started Hong Kong directors in Hollywood action films. Yeah. And even though it wasn't appreciated at its time, its effects are still felt today. Yeah. Although John Woo went, fuck ya, I'm going back to Hong Kong. The legacy all... has been still felt on Hollywood. Well, it's going to be one of my faves for a very long time. I simply couldn't ask for more. Definitely check it out. It appears we'll have one last hunt after all, pick. <laughs> If this blast from the past hit your target hard, maybe you should click like, subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can see some other goodness in the future.